The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. And welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Friday, the 5th of November, 2021, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. And good morning. It's Friday. That means it's Culture Friday, and I got a jam-packed show for you. I got a little sort of housekeeping, some things to talk about as we get into the show. Let me start with a bit of somber news, though. I'd like to express condolences to, the, to Lee Calendar and the Calendar family on the passing of his mother, Faye Callender. Faye Callender was not only the mother of the phenomenal talent, Lee Callender, but was also the last living daughter of Timothy Gibson, composer of the national anthem. Of and so today I want to send condolences to the family. And to some, I want to say, interesting news this morning. I don't know quite where to start, but I can tell you where we're going to start. We're going to start on Milo Butler Highway to the gentleman that decided that he was going to make a movie on Milo Butler Highway yesterday. And I say gentleman, that's my bias. Let me, let me start that again. To the person, gender neutral, who may have been driving that vehicle with tinted windows. I saw a 58-second clip yesterday of a, gen, of a driver on the driving south on the northbound lane and a portion of Samilo Butler Highway. I uh, was stunned, I was just watching one minute of it, to find out that the video clip, the video clip was actually closer to five minutes long. And what I thought was perhaps um, a lack of judgment or somebody getting lost in between fire trail and Carmichael on Milo Butler Highway may have been somebody who decided to make a movie yesterday without getting a movie license, without getting clearance from the Ministry of Works and the Ministry of Transportation to have roads closed. Um, and I just want to say to you, whenever you're ready to leave the country, all of us will sign your cards to say you could go. Because you obviously don't want to be a part of this country. You don't want to be a part of this community. You don't want to be with people. You don't want to be friends with us. You want to be nice to us, and that's cool. You don't have to be. You go somewhere else. You go find the people that you do respect sufficiently to participate in society with the appropriate and mindfulness and empathy. So yeah, man, everything cool. When you're ready, call me. I got a dollar fifty on your ticket to go wherever you want to go. And if you catch Minutes, the ride could be free because I hear Minutes like to fish on the moon and I think you may enjoy driving out there. Anyway, that was just ridiculous. I mean, that was just madness. And I think uh, if you saw the video and you heard the commentary by the person taking the video, that it's just unacceptable and you need to do better. And since we're talking about uh, unacceptable and needing to do better, Time will change this weekend. Time will change this weekend. It is Friday. Time is going to change on Sunday. And if I am not correct, we are going to fall forward. We're going to push our clocks forward one hour. Isn't that what we do? You sure we don't spring?
Right. Anyway, I tell you what Google tell me. I will tell you what Google tell me. Yeah, but the Tribune say the clocks go forward at 2 a.m. on Sunday. That's what I was saying. Like, I, I thought we fall back. But anyway, the Tribune is saying we spring forward. It's Culture Friday. We're talking ghost stories, Guy Fawkes, and other folklore. So I just thought this would be an interesting story to bring up today. And my guest is telling me we fall forward, right? We fall forward. We go forward, right? No, we, we spring forward and we fall back. That's right, we fall back. Yes, we fall back. So on Sunday at 2 a.m., what's going to happen? We fall back. To 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Thank you. Tribune, I don't know what's happening. So, in fact, I'd like all the state agencies and media houses to do me a favor. I want you to do me two favors. First of all, let's all coordinate our clock. Let's everybody in the country coordinate our clock to the same time. Perry Christie is no longer the leader of the country, so we don't need to coordinate our clocks to his time anymore. It's all coordinated. Also, to government agencies and uh, communication service providers, could you please ensure that all your telecommunication systems are working properly? Can you ensure that all your voicemail systems are initialized? Can you make sure that all your internal switchboard systems are working? Can you make sure that all your voicemail systems have been initialized, have a name attached to them, and are clear so that new messages can be added to those boxes? The Bahamian public would thank you greatly for that. Because we cannot be in communication with you if we cannot be in communication with you. I'd like to say good morning to the wonderful people at the uh, cabinet office that entertain my calls regularly when I have to call them because I cannot call the people that I actually need to speak to in the ministries that provide the services that I actually need. So I want to say good morning and thank you to them. Now, one more quick note. And I, this, we don't really talk about politics on a Friday, but I just need to say this. There's a story on the bottom fold the main page of the Guardian, and it's captioned, government will, where warranted, make adjustments to health rules, Cooper says. I just want to remind you of one thing, Honorable Chester Cooper. You see the others that you all are trying to do away with? That is the mechanism that you have available to you right now to be able to govern in a manner that allows you to make adjustments to the rules on the fly. See, if you're not ready to stick with one set of rules, then you're not ready to leave that space and entrench these rules in ordinary legislation. Perhaps you've jumped the gun. You all need to think about this seriously. Because what is inherent, what is obvious in all of your statements around us, including these, is that you acknowledge that these rules constitute a restriction of rights. You acknowledge that. This is not one of those little pieces of legislation you just gonna pass while nobody's looking or while you have a super majority and you've taken the entirety of your backbench and given them a job and a promise. We don't care that there is no real substantive opposition in the house. Y'all don't talk lightly. Don't play politics with this one. This is a serious one. And then on to another matter. Um, Kermit, remember that thing I tell you I wanted to play? I wanted. Good morning, Honorable Iram Lewis. How are you? I just wanted to reach out to you to say good morning. And uh, I just wanted to ask you a question. The other day in the house, when you were talking to the speaker, this wasn't an attempt to garner political credit in the face of a leadership race. Eh? I just wanted to know if you thought you was going to sort of stretch out and establish yourself as a force in the house, you know, to put on your resume for the other vibe you're working on. But I wanted to share something with you. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to tell you, ask, ask me. 
Because if the Speaker of the House would look at me like that, I was going to run. Not run my mouth, you know, but run my feet. Come and play that for more. Ask me why I run. Tell you why I run. Say the woman at the door had a dog on shotgun. That is why I run. Now I came home one minute to three. He say who and I say me. He say I got company. I say young man that is bigger me. That's when I began to shout. If I can't come in, she can't come out. The woman with the gun came through the door. Under my feet, grass grow no more. Ask me why I run. Tell you why Listen, Iram, every answer to every question you ever had is in the heart of a woman. You just got to ask the right questions, and I don't think he was asking the right questions yesterday. But you could have asked me, and I would have tell you why I run before you get yourself in that issue. But that's only because we're talking ghost stories and Guy Fox today, Honorable Iram Lewis. That's all. I just want you to hear a ghost story. And ask me why I run before you put yourself in that same position. Well, good morning. I'm going to read a couple of texts right before I bring in my guests, and then we're about to go. First text says, happy Guy Fox Day, Miss Green. Boy, before you tell me happy Guy Fox Day, you got to ask me, what does Guy Fox Day mean to me? Another text, great show as usual. I want to wish Sade Bethel a happy birthday because she is a native Bahamian woman. And I feel that all Bahamian women should have a happy, happy birthday. So Sade Bethel, happy birthday to you. Another text says, we fall one hour back. I mean, that's what I thought. Another text says, good morning, Miss Green. We spring forward during March, April, and fall backward on November. And it's so simple. In the spring, you go forward. In the fall, you fall back. But it wasn't me. Initially, I wasn't confused. It was when I saw the Tribune that I became confused. That's all. Thank you very much for your calls. But also, let me show you all something. You see, this is one of those little things that we think everybody knows. Because we learned it in school or we learned it at home, or at summer camp, or at church. But the truth is, this is, this is one of those things that isn't taught everywhere anymore. And because a part of it is because of the advent of the smartphone and the technology. Because for many of us, our phones just adjust. If you've got a smartphone, it will just adjust itself at the right time if you have the settings correctly. But if you have a bubbler, if you have a regular boy on the island, if you use old people cheering, and you don't rely on a phone to do that, right? But there are things that we stop teaching each other and our children. And, but, but the worst part about it is we still expect them to know it. And so today, I've invited my guest, Mr. Arnold Rapp Wilson, local archivist, and Cecil Newry, amateur historian and poet, to, sh to the show today to talk about some things that we don't talk about enough. Let me give you guys the call-in lines, because I want you to join the conversation as well. Like I said, we're talking ghost stories, Guy Fawkes, and other local folklore. Last week, I invited you to call in and tell us your ghost stories, or text in and tell us your ghost stories. I got a couple of texts on my private line I can share with you all. And so the text line is 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. That's powered by BTC, standard text rate supply. You can call us at 323-6232, 325-4316, or 325-4259. Again, that's 323-6232. 3254316 or 3254259. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good, good. So this morning, Mr. Wilson has brought to me newspaper articles about the events that we discussed last week, Mr. Nuri and I, the Collins Avenue ghost story. And so I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I see I got a, Caller, good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Yes, good morning, Aaron. How are you? I'm good, thank you. 
wonderful, Aaron. I'm, 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 I'm you, 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 you and that's that, that, that speaker like, like she, she ain't, ain't a part of the, uh, the, uh, the process, man. No, you no. Know? I mean, what you mean? Don't you mean what I mean? Exactly what I. Oh, you saying that I'm not offering a fair critique and not uh, acknowledging <laughs> the things that she would have done wrong? Um, no, no, not what she would have done wrong. What, what, how um, um, would have, would have done wrong? You see, the first impression is if you're respecting the chair or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, and because that place is full of full of men, um, they had all that problem the last time. This speaker is not going to allow that ugly head to arise. Okay, but your question is that, is he doing that so he could run for the FNM leadership just to say he's stern and daring? That, that was your question to him. Well, no, I mean, that was, that was a polite way to ask the question. Yes. I was hoping uh -huh. that people with subtext underneath. Yes. You know, because I think that uh, he took a well, mighty bold right, move right, and it was right. not a, you know, a, yes, a yes. wise one. Yes, he sure did. He sure was brave and bold about it. Yeah. But, the, but the speaker had to put a foot down and ask the question, are you challenging the chair? And you see, that's to stop anything that is negative to rise up against the chair. At his first see, see, the first impression is lasting. If he do that, the rest can do that. Yeah. Okay? So, mm -hmm. so um, I'm, I'm thank you for looking out for the speaker. Cause, uh, and and you, also, you also was looking out for Haram, too. Okay? But one thing, that's why I like to listen to you. Thank you. Well, I don't, I don't want him to get pinched. I spend plenty of time getting pinched. I don't think, I see, I, I look at him yesterday. He don't look like a man who ever get pinched proper in his life. I, I really trying to save him from something. Uh, but, you know, that's just a, that's like a, that's like another folklore. I mean, I don't think that don't. And the women's them, well, the women's them appreciate it, right? I think that she stood. And I think that if that's what he was trying to do, she ain't let it happen, and that's all good. That's all good. He could try. Anyway, I got to get to the show. So I want to begin the show by reading an excerpt, Mr. Wilson, uh, this article by Athena Damianos. Which publication was it taken it from? The from the Tribune. All right, so this is taken from the Tribune on Tuesday, May 22nd, 1979. It began on a quiet Mother's Day, two Sundays ago. Mrs. Sarah Jane Campbell, returning home from church that evening, was bombarded by rocks that fell through the living room roof, but left no holes in the ceiling. The mystery deepened four days later when a group of neighbors, praying to ward off evil spirits, saw ashtrays rise in midair and then crash to the living room floor. The story of a house on Ninth Terrace, Centerville, obsessed by an evil spirit, spread through Nassau yesterday, causing a sensation. Crowds gathered outside the old three-bedroom home at about 3 o'clock and grew after the tale was told over local television. By nightfall, police had barricaded two blocks, to keep, two blocks um, of, of streets to keep the growing mob from the scene. By about 10 o'clock, after repeated commands from the police to clear the streets, Firemen turned their water hoses on the crowd. It caused a frenzy. Young boys threw large stones and rocks at the policemen. They shouted abuse and threats. The rocks hailed from the roof, breaking the china cab and a bureau mirror. Mrs. Campbell was frightened. Her grandchild returned home, but not yet Mr. Campbell from his cousin's house down the road because she was too afraid. Mr. Campbell finally called. The next day, a neighbor boy was accused of throwing rocks at the house. He denied he had done so. Inside the house, rocks was thrown, and you don't see nobody, said Mrs. Campbell. The spirit must be in my china cabinet and all about, said Mrs. Campbell. She stopped sleeping at home and stayed at neighbors' homes with her grandchild. Quote, Cedric stayed in the house and said he heard people walking up and down all night. This morning, I came back and I found the things broken up. I get frightened, she said. A prayer band arrived at the house on the Thursday following the first incident. Three young people, Karen Cox, Delvin Ellis, Kevin Ellis, saw ashtrays rise in midair, then crash to the ground. And now mind y'all, that's what I tell my Grammy. First time she catch me smoking cigarette. I continue. 
quote, it's like the next step beyond, Delvin said. But while some people, respectable in appearance, solemnly swear to having witnessed voodoo, rumors were rife about supernatural happenings. There were, were reports that the trees outside the old home danced and the windows jumped out of the house. The stove and the kettle were said to have danced and demons attacked Mrs. Campbell, sending her to the hospital. However, police knew nothing of this and Mrs. Campbell did not mention it. Some people thought, that the fact, thought the fact that the old Campbell homestead had once stood isolated in overgrown Ninth Terrace was significant. People had gathered before the house to wait for midnight. That was when the trees were supposed to have danced and the windows to shudder. However, no trees danced last night. At 8.20 p.m., Mr. Francis Ngombe, a visiting bush doctor, mystic and seer from Africa, called at the house dressed in a white robe. He stayed inside for 20 minutes. Dr. Ngumbe said he did not feel the presence of an even, evil spirit. Quote, I found nothing in the house that could have harmed anyone, he said. There could have been something, but if anyone disbelieves me, I will sleep in the house overnight. He said that occurrences other than ghosts, such as isolated blasts of wind could cause strange movements. If there was a ghost in the house, someone should have been violently ill, he said. I examined the house and as a responsible officer, I could see nothing that suggested damages caused by the supernatural. Superinti sorry, Superintendent Darville said, I don't know what went on in that house. It is true that glass had broken. Close quote. A sensation was caused when the house was shown and the story told over TV 13 television, he said. Mr. Darvel suggested that all people keep away from the area, but for those who do not heed his advice and happen to encounter a spirit, remember the incantation, 1010, the Bible 10. And here ends the story by Athena Damianos, Tuesday, May 22nd, 1970. Nine. Well, this is the first time I have read that story in its entirety, and I want to thank Mr. Wilson for bringing it to my attention and sharing it with me today. What Mr. Wilson does is so important, particularly that he's an archivist and he has been collecting newspaper articles about significant events in Bahamian history and in the lives of ordinary people in the country. Now, why this is so important is because we are an oral tradition. Our country, like our culture, we are, our history keeping, we are an oral tradition. That's how we keep our stories. And so now that we've moved into print and our communities grow larger, we need people to collect the stories as they are documented and hold them so that they can be found, so that the younger generations of Bahamians can connect to them. And so I say thank you. I'm going to go to this call, get a couple of texts, and then we're going to get back to a couple of more clips from the archives of Mr. Arnold Rapp Wilson. Good morning, Callie, you're on the clock. And good morning, Ms. Green, on Ghost Story Friday. Good morning, Sparky, how you do? Oh, it'll be day, it'll be talking Ghost Story, but um, that, that article with, with Rapp, you just read, that article might have came out there, but I don't think the event happened in 1977, 1979. Okay. I think that's when the article might have been written. Okay. Because I was living through East Avenue Center as a young boy. Because I remember I was in one of the, I was in the crowd when we ran down there by Frank, where Frank Hanna Janitorial lives now. Right. The house is on the corner right now. It looks like it's being rebuilt. It's up to two story now. Okay. It's right there on the corner when you make that curve from uh, Carmike, I mean, um, um, Columbus Primary School headed up north. Mm hmm. Right on the curve, right there behind the wall there. Where they got the little park clean up. That two story building is where the house was. Okay. Uh, I remember because I was even one of the little guys up in them Ponciana trees. When the police turned the water on everybody. Sparky, how old you were? How old uh, you were then? I, I had to be um, in my teens, but it could be 1977, because 1977, I was living on, 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 um, 
on Madera Street. Mm -hmm. And that was when my daughter was born in 1977. And that's when ZNS was open in 1977. Okay. ZNS was open June 1977. My daughter, Keisha, was born February 1977. She was not born when this incident happened. Now, there's another incident that we know about up in there with a ghostly story. I have to rapidly remember the greasy man. Mr. Yeah, right with the greasy man. Thank you. Thank you, Sparky. I'm going to ask him right now. I think everyone in, the, in that <clears throat> Collins Avenue area would have known about the greasy man. Well, I, Everyone. I'm going to need you to find me some articles about the Greasy Man because they're going to be our next expose into Bahamian ghost story and folklore. Man, thank you so much, Parky, for that. Uh, let me get to these texts. Thank you uh, to my guests. A text says, great show as usual. They're enjoying your contributions. Uh, another text, Aaron, I remember that incident as clear as day. We're standing in the crowd for hours. And haven't seen anything still to this day. Yeah, but you don't watch nothing. Sometimes ghosts work in mysterious ways. What if the aim of the ghost was to bring a community together? You know, like, what if that was the aim? they like politicians. They get tricky sometimes. Another text, the late Charlie Mortimer, national team pitcher, developed an off-speed pitch called Center Will Ghost. <laughs> well, look at that. Webbo Pabli. His nickname was Webbo Pabli? Yeah, that's what they used to call him. But he also, like he said, he had a ghost pitch that actually he considered was a strike code pitch. You never used to see it coming. Okay. That's where he adapted that pitch from, that, that name. Okay. Now let me tell you all something to my three score and ten gang and my older behemoths. You all see that connection just now? See, I went to summer camp in Elutra where baseball and softball is big, big, big thing. Yeah. Right? My people connect to baseball is big thing. And here we have this ghost story where I'm sure a phenomenal Bahamian player develop a whole pitch mm -hmm. style that he called the Centerville Ghost. Imagine if that boy was on the Bahamian national porking team. Mm -hmm. Ah, boy. The, them foreigners could... the, the porky team, you mean? Porky team? Look how we're going to have to fire Grand Bahama. The yeah. whole of Grand Bahama. Yeah. Look, look here. The, the porky team. No, no, that's in Grand Bahama. You gotta call it correct. In Grand Bahama, they call it Porky. Oh, okay. In the Baham in, in, the, in the Bahamas, we call it Porky <laughs> in your head. The real Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, to my Grand Bahamian people, including my brother, in Grand Bahama, we love y'all. Another text quickly. Ms. Green, please. Yeah, don't watch nothing. Sparky, the people say they know you have plenty information in your head. So let me ask you the questions. So I could pull it out. Otherwise, in fact, I want to say good morning to my auntie, Audrey DeVoe, who's a champion pincher. That's what I wanted to ask you, Sparky. Do you get pinched when you was young? And can you tell Aram Lewis about that experience? Because I don't think he ever get pinched when he was young. Another text says, good morning, Aaron. Date is correct. My coworker told me about the walking coconut tree. I was on that job from 1978 to 1981. Wow. Okay, I've got another article from another story. This is Saturday, the August the 28th, 1982. And this is, it would have been in the Tribune as well, Mr. Wilson. But it, it, the story is coming out of uh, Massachusetts, which is fascinating. Yeah. I just, put, I just uh, attached that because I don't usually keep any foreign history. Yeah. It's just that it just... The story about the Bahamas? It, no, no, no. Yeah. It was just an incident that took place about a house which they consider haunted. Okay. That's the reason why I just put that side by side. Ah. Uh, also. Yeah. yeah. It's not the only. <laughs> exactly. It's not the only, <laughs> right. And there's a, attached to it, there's a picture of the house from May the 22nd, 1979. And the caption, the picture's in the newspaper, and the caption reads, the tale of a house obsessed by evil spirits spread across Nassau like wildfire. It caused a sensation as hundreds of people rushed to the scene. Police last night had to use fire hoses to fight back the crowd. Yeah, yeah. If you were part, listen, if you remember reading that article, here's another caption. Hundreds of curiosity seekers literally kept a so-called haunted house located at the corner of Collins Avenue and Durham Street West under siege Monday after a week of reports of supernatural phenomena mm. in the aging structure. 
The above photo shows a portion of the crowds which gathered at the haunted house. And I'm going to read one more quick excerpt by Vern Darville. Vernon Darville. Well, Mr. Darville is the newspaper paper, news people paper that call you Vern and not me a young child to you. A haunted house located at the corner of Collins Avenue and Durham Street West was literally under siege all day Monday by an estimated 300 persons who converged on the home, said to be the site of various supernatural phenomena over the week. Occupants of the house owned and occupied by Cedric Campbell, his wife, granddaughter, and uh, retarded son, Monday, that's how it's printed, were physically restricted to the concrete dwelling by crowds who jammed the structure's front porch and crowded the home's back door. This reporter was able to gain entrance to the aging home and spoke with the nephew of the owner of the structure, 20-year-old police constable Ronald Campbell. Okay, so that's the connection that I didn't quite get clear. There was a police officer living in the house mm -hmm. that verified his personal <laughs> accounts, right, of what he experienced. On Friday night, recounted Constable Campbell, we were sitting in the front room in the dark when the door, which had been previously locked, flew open and a ball of wind flew past us. Me, my brother, cousin, and uncle, four of us, and we heard something stumbling in the kitchen. Now look here. That could have been the breeze. <laughs> and listen, if your Grammy used to make coconut tart and leave it in the kitchen, that could have been the teeth. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not discounting the lived uh, experiences of others. My brother was wearing a pair of reflector shades, and he was holding them towards the kitchen, but that did not help. The noise and stumbling continued for a minute or two until the china closet glass started to break. Constable Campbell related that the supernatural phenomena actually started on Sunday, May 13th, and has been occurring daily at random times when this whirlwind comes into the house and breaks yet another pane in the china closet the obvious object that is the, the target of the supernatural attacks. Wow. Wow. So many testimonies, though, and, and articles on it. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. What, what I found um, interesting was that um, there's a story about a sports person, a bohemian sports person, and that he created a style based on a story. That story, especially how we build in the, the baseball stadium, yes. um, should be retold too. Yes. Right? Uh, and, and bring the whole narrative of what is Bohemian and, and, and stories to, to, the, to the Bohemiana in general. Absolutely. And, and that's, the, that's the thing that mascots are made of. Yeah. Right? Like you want to be on the big scene, on the big stage, you need an identity. And it's your own lived experiences individually and collectively, that helped to form that identity. I said, I got a couple of callers on the line. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, caller. Yeah, it don't sound like um, CA News, which I, I don't recognize other person with you, but oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, um, well, if this happened in, um, what, more than 1979? Now, the articles are printed in... May of 1979. Well, and I thought, sure, that it happened in the, at, at least... 1981, but if they say 79, 79 is it. But Ronald Campbell, um, he would have been younger than me in the police force. I joined in November, 5th of November, the day would make me 50 years, um, 71. Okay. So I would have been, um, if it was, you, you said it was July 79? Well, May. Or May 79. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, well, I, I would have still been 26. Okay. August 5th would have made me 20, 20, uh, no, 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 I would have been 24 August. August 5th would have made me uh, 25 if, okay. it was, if it was 79. Okay. So what I'm saying, Sparky, I, I think Sparky always said that he is, he is around 70, so Sparky couldn't have been in, in his team. <laughs> Sparky need to recollect that, that. He couldn't have been in his team. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Thank you. Right now. Thank you very much. And, and, right. and this is the process, right? Yeah. That the people go through to get the history right. See, you, you don't just leave it in the hands of the historians. First of all, you don't put the burden on them alone. Mm -hmm. But the process itself is not, I won't say more complicated, but it's different. You got to, I, I beg you, I need you to, to call and find a way to contribute. You don't have to be my show. Find a historian. Find one young person. Pinch them. Grab them. Pinch them. Let them know you charging them. Mm -hmm. They got something to do. 
They need to help you document these stories because we got to bring, we got to document the stories. Then we got to sit together and reconcile them, mm -hmm. weigh them one against the other and let the balance show, right? They will balance themselves with the truth. But um, I want to say to my three score and 10 gang, we, I don't want to say y'all owe us because we owe y'all too. But we got to come together to figure this out because we cannot let this history be lost in time. I got another text here that says, I'm coming to you in a second, caller. It, it says, I was 19 years old. The place was across from Frank Hanna. I'm 61. Sparky is older than, almost 10 years older than me. So he was not in his teens. He was almost 10. Okay, I appreciate what you're saying. Sparky's 10 years younger than you, so he, he couldn't have been at that age. I appreciate that. And I want to say thank you, Sparky, for making the first move and giving us a statement to use to reconcile our other experiences mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. You have a timeline now. You're right, right. Another text said, great show as usual, Miss Green. I heard Percy House out east was also haunted. And then the person said, I can't use... No, you can't use the word mango and the word... Um, you Negro in those contexts. I will send you a list of words that we can use. We gotta be responsible, man. Anyway, you hear that music? That means it's time for a break. I want you all to check out this song by Exuma called Guy Fox. I bet you didn't even know he had this. It's sweet, you know. Stay tuned to Guy. Oh no, that ain't Guy Fox. That's La Bamba, La Bamba by Benji, the Bahamian Junkanoo remake. So you all check this out. This is a sweet one too. We coming right back. Guardian Radio 96.9. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor on the clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor on the clock of Aaron Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents are the best. Reliable service we've been on the scene Protecting since 1919 J.A.S. Johnson Insurance has the test Always, always covered me J.S.J. 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 J.S. Johnson Insurance Peace of mind Hubert Edwards Global, in collaboration with Dr. Dave Burrows and iRise, presents the fifth annual Success Summit under the theme, Success Keys to Transform Your World. December 3rd through 4th, two days of transformational experiences with dynamic presenters from the Bahamas, Nigeria, Canada, USA, and Jamaica. You can't afford to miss this mind shift moment. Five scholarship grants, two leadership awards, one life changing event. This is a virtual event, so visit www.nlsolutionsbahamas.com for more details. This is what you've been waiting for Success Summit 2021. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Oh, Guy Fox, gonna burn the night. Oh, Guy Fox, gonna burn the night. Try to blow up Palo Monte to dynamite. That's why Guy Fox, gonna burn the night. The 5th of November, 1605. Oh, Guy Fox, he was still alive. Try to blow up Palo Monte to dynamite. That's why Guy Fox is gonna burn the night. Burn him just like peas and rice. If you must, then burn him twice. Burn him once, then burn him twice. If you must, then burn him thrice. Old Guy Fox is gonna burn the night. Old Guy Fox is gonna 
Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. We see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Well, I agree. I too agree. Never shall we forget the three. Anyway, it's Guy Fox Day. Yes. It's time to celebrate, apparently. This guy's anti imperialist, anti capitalist. So I ain't encouraging no celebration. But you live in an imperialist land. Yeah. Yes. That's why I, temper, I govern in myself. You govern in yourself. Yeah. Now is not the time for revolution. Mm -hmm. Although we may think it is. It is not the time for revolution. But do you know who Guy Fawkes is, Bahamas? Many of us should know because uh, that's a part of your good, good public and private school education. Mr. Nuri, you know who Guy Fawkes is? Yeah, of course I know who Guy Fawkes is. You ain't... I, I don't tell us. I can tell us. I, I, I thought no, he was no. going to do it. I thought you were just setting up the conversation. No, man, I get it. I get it. He's, I get not, it. he's, not, uh, he's not related to Randall? Well, listen, at <laughs> first, I thought, too feisty by them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, um, uh, Guy Fox was a Catholic, right, uh -huh. um, living in United Kingdom, England. Yeah. And who was against King um, James? Yeah. And he plotted to, to kill him in the House of par Parliament and put gunpowder to blow him up. Right? Like, but you say that, like, you know, King James is just chilling, doing king things, and, and, and Guy had a vibe against yeah. him. It, I, it, it read to me like King oh, yeah. James had a vibe against the Catholics generally, yes. and Guy Fawkes just happened to be one of them. Yeah, he was persecuted. They were persecuted, and then and, uh, and King James was, I believe, the first Protestant um, king of, of, of England. That's when, you know, he changed religion. Yeah, you yeah. Know he's the one who changed religion. Right, and so... James said, look, I, I, I'm into divorce yes. and other things like that. And mm. I think if you're not into that, we should separate. Yes. Like, we should divorce. And, and I think that, if, if I'm correct, I think he's the one out. who transcribed the Bible and put it in, in, into English. Well, I mean, he, that's the one who created the King James Version, Bridget, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, that's, a, that's also a vibe. Anyway, so Guy was just chilling out doing things that Catholics is do, and then they found out that James ain't easy enough. Yeah, you want to be pro-Pope. You don't want right. to be, you know, you know. And so there was a conspiracy that Guy Fawkes apparently got caught up in. And I say I like this story, mm -hmm. right? Um, some historians believe, let's start there. The plot was apparently, oh, it's so much. A group of Roman Catholic nobles and gentlemen led by Robert Catsby conspired to essentially and and Protestant rule with perhaps the biggest bang in history. Their plan was to blow up the king, queen, church leaders, assorted nobles, and both houses of parliament with 36 barrels of gunpowder strategically placed in the cellars beneath the palace of Westminster. The plot was apparently revealed when the Catholic Lord Monteagle was sent a message warning him to stay away from parliament as he would be in danger. That happened here somewhere. It's like It wasn't like danger, danger, like blowing things up. But it was like danger, like they can talk your business in the house if you go. I sure that happened here mm -hmm. as well at some point. Anyway, <clears throat> some historians believe that Cecil had known about the plot for some time and had allowed the plot to thicken to both ensure that all the conspirators were caught and to promote Catholic hatred throughout the country. And the guy, Guy Fawkes, was born in Yorkshire in 1570. A convert to the Catholic faith, Fox had been a soldier who had spent several years fighting in Italy. It is then that he adopted the name Guido, which is Italian for Guy, perhaps to impress the ladies. This place sounds like a Bohemian. What we do know is that Guido was arrested in the early hours of the morning of November 5th, 1605, in a cellar under the House of Lords next to the 36 kegs of gunpowder with a box of matches in his pocket and a guilty expression on his face. First of all, that sounds like a Bahamian prosecutor telling that story. Mm -hmm. Second of all, y'all could have charged this boy with finding by um, stealing by finding. Mm -hmm. Y'all could have charged him with stealing by finding. Y'all didn't have to, you know. Just come across the matches. Execute it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just find the matches. But he didn't just execute it. They tortured him. They tortured him and dragged him through the, through the, through the, through the streets. Yeah. He was hanged, drawn, and quartered. Victims were dragged on a wooden hurdle behind a horse to the place of execution, where they were first hanged, of, first of all hanged, I think, to within an inch of their life. Mm. Then their genitals were removed. They were disemboweled and beheaded. Their bodies were finally quartered, the severed pieces often displayed in public. Again, I say, y'all didn't have to do that to your boy. Mm. 
You could have just charged him with stealing by reason of finding and give him on fine and send him home. But also, it helps us to understand the need for religious tolerance. We ain't gonna be doing things like that to people because they don't believe what we believe. We just ain't. We're gonna let people believe what they believe. Mm. I think that's the best way to move. I see we got a caller on the line. Caller, you're on the clock to the callers I may have missed. I am sorry. Jada, this talk in a way along with you, Aaron. Good Pretty morning, Brayman. How you do? I'm right here. What I want to say, right? Uh huh. Uh, Sparky was right. I don't remember the exactly year, right? Uh -huh. But I remembered uh, we. I was living with my family, and I was I could have seen in those days. And guess what? Um, I'm a ZNS uh, TV. Uh huh. We're not we're not established as yet. Okay. So when I heard you read read that, right? Uh -huh. I was wondering what if we had. Two different story of the uh, ghost on on uh, on um, uh, Collins Avenue, the one what I what I've known of, right? Uh -huh. That was going, that was lived down from the corner, the street which that in uh radio station on over there on the uh, on the northern side, side of Collins of Avenue. Road. So it was not 1973. Okay. Or 70. It was was not in the 70s. Because in the 70s, I was blind. I got you. So, Brayman, you're saying that there's, there's another story that would have been, the house would have been on the northern side of Collins Avenue. Uh, on the northern side of Collins, on the northwest side of Collins Avenue. But, I mean, further north on the road. Right. Closer to the big hill heading to town. Uh, uh, the, uh, just below, just a little below the hill. I got you. So, I think, yeah, these may be two, stor two different stories yeah, that we have been telling over the years, probably. conflating uh, together. Not only that. Uh, Frank Hannah was not on uh, Collins Avenue as yet. I got you. But I think people just using Collins that Avenue. as a frame of reference. Say it again? People just using that as a frame of reference. Oh, yeah, because, you know, we used to play on Collins Avenue, go on the hill, make box cut, and, and roll down the hill. Yes, sir. Uh, but listen, but what, I, I, I got to go. That, what I want to say also, right? Yeah. You're speaking about Guy Fawkes, right? Yeah. Uh, when we, I, I'll put it this way. Uh, uh, when we got the story in school, I got it when I was in primary school, right? Right. But we imitated it uh, when we became adults, uh, youngsters. We okay. used to uh, build it out of clothing uh -huh. and take it on the uh, on, on the western fort uh -huh. and burn it. You see? Yeah. Uh, but what I want to say is, right? In those days, we used to rush from any place of Nassau to the to the western fort. Because people used to come from all over with their guy, right? Okay. And uh, we never, it, it, it wasn't one piece of violence, not all of this criminal stuff. I got you. What's going on now? We could have rushed together in, in uh, what you would call in communities uh -huh. and not, not one problem. Thank you. Now you can't do that in, 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 in these days. Thank you, Brayman. Thank you very much. So here's what's interesting. I was reading an article from Bahamianology, right? And the writer of this article who identifies themselves as Bahamianologist, right, suggests that this experience, this cultural festival that we call Junkanoo may not have come from Africa. And this writer suggests that Junkanoo may be, and if I could read their words, they said, uh, how did African slaves from different regions, languages, allegiances, everything, uh, make his life, John Canoe, real or mythical essential story in their own lives for over 200 years? How did this happen? Who carried the message? If John Canoe was all that myth said he was, why was it encouraged, or at the very least ignored by slave masters? Was John Canoe something else altogether and in fact had nothing to do with Africa? Question mark. They go on to say, was John Canoe a slave adaptation on the British Guy Fox Day? Would this explain why the practice was so heavily prevalent in British slave colonies and why it traveled so freely? Now, to entertain that idea, I would think that the Europeans in traditional European imperialistic fashion saw something that the Africans were already doing and then try to figure out how do we take that and make that ours so when they celebrate that, they think they're celebrating us, mm. right? Like, I could see that, because I could see you trying to convince the slaves to celebrate uh, the burning of Guy Fawkes as a good thing, 
when all good enslaved Africans know that the burning of Guy Fox is a bad thing. Mm. Anyway, uh, Mr. Wilson, you want to say something? No, no? All right. Caller, I mean, I got only 30 seconds for you. You're on Hello. the clock. Hello. Good, good morning. morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry for calling back. Um, but that same Ronald Campbell, who was a camp, who was a constable at 20, um, 20 years old. Yes. He was my junior. He had a, a brother, 79. Campbell was my senior. So Ronald Campbell went on to be superintendent in charge of the police band. Okay. And he just retired here a, 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 a few years ago. Okay. Uh, under, probably under five years. Probably in 2017, he retired. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you could get him on, I mean, okay. if he was willing to talk about it, he I got you. He'd up a lot of stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Man, look here. Leave your number with the producer. Caller, caller, you got 30 seconds. Give me something good. Good morning. You still there? i sorry we lost you. Caller, okay, I gotta, I'm going to get through the last of these texts. I see them coming. They got 30 seconds. Let's go. Ah, you didn't get it. Aaron, please share Rupert Missick's short story about the Exuma Hog, the young BEC linesman, and the okra soup. Well, I am going to find Rupert Missick to get that story to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another text, Aaron, good morning. Uh, I saw a couple of guys on Adley Street and Step Street. Well, listen, this is why I brought Cecil Newry here today. Cecil, very quickly, how is Fox Hill celebrating Guy Fox? Fox Hill celebrates Guy Fox every year on November 5th. We, have our own, we build our own effigy and we burn it. Uh, it's amazing that 260 years later since Guy Fox has been died and tortured and, and, and moved, that we still celebrate it. Uh -huh. And um, it's, uh, I find it uh, peculiar that black people uh, enjoy burning effig effigies of white persons and why the establishment allowed such. Uh -huh. so, but I believe that it had a, a mixed message. They wanted to make sure that the, 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 the natives of the nation knew that this is the consequence of challenging the British government, mm -hmm. that death is certain, mm -hmm. and that we will burn you forever mm -hmm. and ever. And 200 years later, we still have it ingrained into us. But every good African child knows that a pinch from your mummy, your grammy, your auntie, your godmother, mama in the community is far worse than a pinch from any government. Any government could do you. They can't do you as bad as that woman who you're supposed to honor and revere could do you. Anyway, I want to thank the gentleman today for joining me and enriching the show. Cecil Neary, we got to come back on and tell yeah, the Fox Hill story definitely. of Guy Fox. Because I was wondering why in 1990, uh, anyway, I had some neighbors who was burning effigies of politicians after the FNM won a big election. Oh. And I didn't understand it at the time. Mm -hmm. But delving into this history and the history of Fox Hill and effigies, it's not as strange mm -hmm. as I originally thought it was. Mm -hmm. And that's why... By Bahamians, you got to know your history. You got to know where you're from. You got to know the lived experience that have helped to form the world that you currently living in. Text says, I go, Aaron, it was 1979. I remember the story quite well. Another text, Aaron, you don't have to read this on air. Okay, I will record it. Thank you. Make sure we have that. And the last one. And. <laughs> When I said Exuma, I wasn't talking about your rental property in Exuma Texter, but thank you for throwing that shade at us. Anyway, I got to go. We're all out of time. It's 11 a.m. Levon Millen Unleashed is up next. I hope you enjoyed the ghost stories, the Guy Fawkes stories, and the folklore. Please collect your own stories. Your nation needs you. Have a great day, Bahamas, and thank you to my producer for letting us out with that good Guy Fawkes uh, by Exuma. You guys have a great, great day, and thank you, Mr. Wilson. I'm burning up, got to take a match and burn them down. Where you gonna burn them, got to take a match and burn them down. Take a match and burn them, got to take a match and burn them down. Where you gonna burn them, got to take a match and burn them down. Hey, God, let it burn. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.